British artist Francis Bacon's two studies for self-portrait is estimated to fetch up to £18 million at a Sotheby's auction in London tomorrow. But what is the role of the self-portrait in an age where a consumerist culture has become selfie-obsessed? Internationally acclaimed British artist Anthony Mikolaev has had sellout shows around the world and has previously produced work to highlight the plight of trafficked women, violence around the world and the occupation of the Palestinian territories. His new exhibition titled Self is a meditative reflection on the self and the selfie phenomenon and it opens at the Lazaridis Gallery in London this Friday. Anthony, welcome to Going Underground. Media talking about selfies, certainly in the political sphere, talks about the famous Obama, Cameron, uh, uh, Thoring, Schmidt, the Danish Prime Minister. Makes it kind of fun. <laughs> Uh, the way you look at selfies is a little darker than that. A little that. bit different. Well, I think the way I have approached my paintings and this particular body of work being self-portraits, I mean, it's more introspective. The whole nature of selfies, I think it's all based on voyeurism and narcissism, really. Um, everybody likes to take a selfie. You know, everyone likes to promote their sort of shop window on social media, but the way I'm painting is it's really just me in my room looking at a mirror, so it, it, it's a lot more in-depth, I'd say. But some commentators always say, you know, the selfie should be respected uh, as it appears on social media. It's as good as the Rembrandts of old, and it's just a new version of it. Well, I don't know if it is as good. I mean, everyone can take a selfie. I mean, you know, anyone who can handle a phone these days could take a selfie. I mean, my particular self-portraiture is just a lot more in-depth, but, you know, I'm looking beneath the surface, I would say, really. So um, it, it's more of a portrait, um, what's going on the inside rather than on the outside. I mean, my particular portraits are not about me looking good, you know. It's, um, I just want to convey an emotion or uh, some kind of um, deeper personality. And I don't think when people are taking selfies on Facebook or social media, they're trying to portray that. So it's very different in that respect. Because one criticism against young British art, as it, as it was, was it was obsessed by the self. And in fact, figurative art wasn't really part of uh, well, that type of work. This is figurative art. So. I mean, this is figurative art, no doubt. I mean, I, I, think, um, I think all artists, in a sense, have to have a sense of narcissism or, you know, it is about the self. I mean, you know, it's, it's an incredibly self-indulgent job. I mean, it's one of the few jobs you can just talk about yourself and it's actually part of the job, you know, and it's allowed. I've spent, you know, the last year and a half in my studio in front of a mirror having narcissistic conversations with myself, painting these pieces. Um, but my end game is to create something which has uh, an emotional value, to me anyway, and hopefully other people will see that too. Well, you have been very successful, so presumably it will do very well. Of course, some people will point to the influence of Francis Bacon. Sure, do you not yeah. think that some people say that Britain hasn't been so great about recognising a British artist like Francis Bacon. I think most of them are in America, in fact, Bacon's. I think Francis Bacon is pretty respected. Now, today, but I mean, when he was a struggling <coughs> artist, as it was here. Fashions go, trends come and go, and I think if you make quality work, no matter what genre you work in, no matter what medium, I think, you know, that stands the test of time and people will see it. And that's a really nice thing as an artist, so to, to, to see that quality. Now, the gallery at which these are going to be exhibited, uh, Steve Lazaridi's gallery, he was on the show and he was uh, avowedly political. Politics not usually associated, would you say, with the art? Making political art um, basically comes down to you and how you feel at that time. If you feel very strongly about something, then I think you have the right to, to portray it in your art. So. But most of the art is best loved by the mainstream narrative mm. are ones that avowedly say, look, I don't want to go there, I don't want to go anywhere political, this is outside of that. Well, I, I think as an artist you go through different phases in your life where you feel politically motivated and you feel very strongly about things, um, but it has to be honest, you, it has to be sincere, otherwise I think people can see that. And so I think if you're going to make political art, you know, you, you have to feel strongly about it, otherwise, otherwise it doesn't really count. So. Because it's noticeable that when art was particularly funded by, it has to be said, advertising agents mm. here in Britain, you wouldn't expect a series of artists to talk about the plight of Palestinians. You, you visited Bethlehem. I did. I visited Bethlehem um, with an exhibition called Santa's Ghetto, uh, which was curated by Banksy. Um, 
it was a group of artists from all around the world um, and we spent a few weeks there making work and we had an exhibition in Manger Square which was um, just opposite the church of the nativity where Jesus was supposedly born and um, yeah no it, it was a great show but you know we had Palestinians we had Israelis we had lots of very different people and it wasn't it was it was more it was you know we were helping a children's charity so it, in that respect okay it was behind the wall but it was um, it was kind of apolitical in that sense but as an artist myself particularly I felt very privileged just to be there so how can you unite art which is about community groups mm. classes with the idea Bring of self together. which with with this exhibition it is the idea of self are these well, two oppo yeah, no, is there an opposition here to me this I mean this particular body of work is co the complete opposite for me um, about community this is all about me really and that's why it's called self so and I, I didn't want to try and dress it up in any other way I mean this particular exhibition is about painting it's about the language of paint it's about the movement of paint and how it works and how it talks and correlates with the you know with so why self. why do you think that figurative art became so unfashionable after the big uh, well, during the boom in sure. corporate sponsored art, uh, I mean, I, I, you make a conscious decision to be a figurative artist. You must, of course, leaving art I mean, school, you knew that. Sure, but you know, I, I, I think as an artist, you, you know, you realise your strengths and what you're good at. Um, and I feel very comfortable making figurative art. And for me, there's so much to explore. And I feel like literally, I've just learned how to paint you know, in this way, and now I'm so excited about the next show, and hopefully the next show after that. So you're constantly exploring as an artist, and you never reach a destination when you're there. You know, it's, it will always be a journey, and that's the, the great thing about it. But in terms of community, this is a very separate show from that. I've literally locked myself away for a very long time, and I've come out with these paintings. So how do you think that the uh, social media and uh, big corporate uh, IT corporations that have uh, changed the way we see ourselves in terms of images. Well, it's all changes the yeah, way you look at this. It's all advertising, isn't it? And they choose certain people, certain looks um, of how they feel we should be perceived, and then other people lash onto that, and then, you know, and they think I I want to look like this. So it's really funny because um, you know I think Kim Kardashian she takes. Well, I, I read a quote somewhere. Who's that? I don't know. <laughs> She's someone famous. Um, apparently, she takes. She said to get the, the you know the best selfie, you take fourteen pictures of yourself, and then you choose the right one. And, and it's, I found that quite funny because you know I do fifteen to maybe twenty different heads before I you know rest on the one I'm happy with. But I, I, I think our motives or aim are completely the opposite and very different in that sense. Because their motives are to be as. To offer as conventional an idea of beauty yeah, as seen uh, yeah, I mean, right I mean, now. It, it's controlled, isn't it? You know, how, how you want to be perceived. I mean, that's what she's putting out there. Um, I mean, you know, my selfies are not the most flattering selfies, really. I mean, they kind of look like burnt car. You know, you got hit in a car crash or something. I mean, they're not flattering in that sense. You're not going, hey, look at me, you know, I'm on holiday with my kids. They might look great. You know, it, it's very... Well, obviously, art does change the way a few years later, maybe. Changes the way conventional ideas of beauty. Yeah, of are. course. So, I mean, if anyone wants to look like this in a few years' time, I'd be, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd find that quite funny. So, I'd be a happy man. It'd be great if I could influence that, you know. But, we're um, not obviously supporting mutilation. Yeah, or, yeah no, uh, no, no. Self-portraits on Facebook yeah, or Twitter. Just but. stick to crayons, kids. Anthony Mikolaev, thank you. Thank you.